the things that President, that Vice President Harris says she's for seem to be politically driven and not heartfelt. For example, you know, her big promise, you know, her promise about taxing tips, which she took from President Trump. And it was, it was to seem like a last minute, you know, I'm going to do this because it's politically savvy. Her, her change on the border, her failure to explain why she didn't do that before, you know, the, the, all of the inconsistencies in that seem, again, not heartfelt, but politically driven. The big signature, you know, economic reform that she promised during the convention to give every new business in this country $50,000 gift. Okay, well, you know, that's just this laughable um, because in, in New York, there are a thousand new businesses starting a day. That would be fifty million a day just for New York businesses, and if you gave that money, there'd be two thousand yeah. or three thousand. No kidding, that would be right. gained so fast you could hardly yeah. imagine and, it. And so you know, she's talking about hundreds of billions of dollars a year, and where's that money going to come from? And then you know, her other idea, which is just a half-baked, discredited, terrible idea about uh, price controls. Oh yeah, you know. And wage controls, every time that's been tried, it's been a catastrophe. There's no place Because no ever. one's ever done it right. No, it can't be done right. And so none of these seem to be well thought out. None of them seem to be part of a, a, a coherent and consistent ideology or thought process. None of them seem to be common sense. And I think, so I don't, I think that you know, she did very well on the debate, but anybody can do well on that debate. Who can anybody who can pass the bar exam, which she did? It, you know, doing that debate, the bar for her was low too. To be fair, the bar was low, but you but know, she did anybody right. can do. You you can anticipate every question that you're going to be asked, or ninety five percent of them. And if you're surrounded by good people, they can write you up a good ninety second, you know, soundbite. So she had these 90-second sound bites, and she delivered them well. But I think her understanding of issues seems to be an inch deep and a, a mile wide. And that, you know, I, what I would really like to see is her going on long-form interviews like yes, this. I'd like to see that, too. Right, and, and, have, and being asked a second question, a third question, why did you do this, explain this, how is this consistent, what was your evolution? Just asking the kind of questions that any curious interview would ask, interview would ask and, and make her explain that, and she can't do it. And this is somebody who's supposed to be president of the United States. They're supposed to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with our critics around the world to explain her vision, to explain her record, to explain her, her aspirations for our country. It seems like she does not understand the uses of power, and we're seeing that, you know, her support of the Ukraine war and of, of nuclear war, and, you know, the, the, the risk of nuclear war, I don't think she has any comprehension. Uh, I, I don't think she has the ability to talk to foreign leaders. Um, I haven't seen any evidence of that, and I think that she is susceptible to manipulation because she doesn't have firm ideas about her own of her own. I think she's susceptible to manipulation by the deep state, by uh, people who want the war, by the neocons that run the White House now and run the foreign policy apparatus of the State Department. And I think, I fear that she'll be manipulated by them and that those entities actually want a nuclear war. So like they did in my uncle's time and like they've done for many, many years, they want a confrontation with Russia. That will fragment Russia and, and give us access to its natural resources and eliminate our big competitor, you know, in the West. And all of their policies have been bad. They that's a dire that's a dire prognostication, that's for sure. Yeah. So that's why I, I'm worried about, you know, her I, I'm worried she won't protect our civil rights, our constitutional rights at home, and she will allow herself, America, to be dragged into um, really catastrophic wars abroad. And I, I, at this point in history, I think that's, you know, we've got the emergence of all these surveillance technologies of AI. This time in history, if we get a president like that, um, it will, uh, for the next four years, it may be too late for our country to ever recover.